Yeah, we, yeah. everybody yeah. mute for now. Yes, please, because I hear some noises. Yeah. And uh, we're going to record this. I mean, people who are not able to attend that will have an access to this recording, right? Um, so let me start. Okay, um, again, if you can close your camera would be nice. Um, and please mute, everybody mute themselves. I think everybody did fine. My name is Tanzilia Oren. I am a volunteer with Reef Asylum Support. And uh, today I'm going to present the um, unemployment insurance system and the new pandemic unemployment assistance. I let me start recording as well. I think it doesn't let me record too, um, right. Emma, um, because. Uh, Maybe if you're sharing your screen. Yeah, I think something. Um, well, I'm recording, so it should be. Okay, that's fine. So just to let you know, so I worked in the labor department 10 years ago and my job was to explain the system to immigrant job seekers and workers. That's why I know a little bit more about the system and the logic and how the system work. And why we present it to you today is so you have some control over information. So you understand the logic of the system, who is the system for, how to access it and what's happening with this now in very difficult times we live through in pandemic. It's a huge natural kind of disaster. And uh, so there are a lot of changes in the system happening. Um, and the more you know, the better you feel, I hope. Um, so this webinar is for those who have obtained the social security number and work authorization. You may, so many of you are still seeking asylum that's fine, you still can access the system, but you need this already received the uh, work authorization and social security. Without this, you cannot access this specific program. And uh, you worked, another condition that you worked a little bit already in this country or in the New York City or state, over about to start working in New York. This is important. You don't need the work history to access the system. But if you worked, it's even better, you can access faster. And you plan to apply for unemployment insurance or you already applied. So I hope you plan to apply, but those who already applied, I hope you will learn something new today as well. Again, you can uh, type your questions in the chat. We'll respond to this later. So what is this webinar specifically about? There is this regular unemployment insurance system that existed always in this country. And there is a new pandemic unemployment assistant, the whole separate system that being built right now for workers. So we'll explain the difference between two and explain who qualifies for either of the systems and what to do once you apply and what to expect. So we're recording this webinar. You can ask questions in the chat and other questions will open the floor at the end and you can ask me directly any questions you may have. First, I start with this regular system that always existed. It's called unemployment insurance. Every worker and every employer pay some tax into the system. This is something you earn. This is not public assistance and this is not welfare. This is something that every worker qualify for if you worked. So unemployment insurance provides some cash benefits for those workers who lost jobs through no fault of their own. It means you, it's not for those who quit the job and left by themselves. It's for those workers who were laid off because the business shut down because of slow uh, business got slow or for any other reason, if you let go without specific reason, then you can apply for this system and get some cash benefit for 26 weeks, usually plus 13 weeks 
of uh, additional during disaster time like now. So now people getting 39 weeks of some cash assistance, cash benefit from unemployment insurance. This cash doesn't match your salary exactly. It's a much smaller amount, but still, today the government gives $600 every week additional to, to anything that unemployment gives you. So it's a great program if you can access it. And let's talk about this, how you can access it. So if your hours were reduced and you work very, and you work part-time or you totally lost your job because your business shut down or they let you go, then that's good. So, and you have to have enough prior wages to establish a claim for unemployment. This is, I'm talking for regular unemployment that is uh, available to all Americans plus immigrants with social security. So you have to have to work at least one, at least two quarters, I means six months history, work history in New York State you need for this, to apply for, for this system. And you have to earn certain amount of money. So I give here on the slide that you have to earn $2,600 a quarter during three months to qualify, plus the rest of the money that second quarter should be um, together with 2,600 should be one and a half times more. So there is a formula how they calculate your eligibility based on your work history and your wage history. So again, I'm talking about this regular system that exists for many years. And you have to be ready and searching for work and you have to be, um, be able to start work immediately. That's the condition they ask when you apply. So again, so there is the whole um, calculation going on how much money they're actually going to pay you during these 39 weeks. Right now in New York State, $172 a week is the minimum minimum you can get from the system and maximum you can get $504 a week. Plus, as I mentioned, the government now during this time giving additional $600 a week on top of it to every eligible person who qualify for the system for regular unemployment insurance. So it's pretty generous program right now during this uh, pandemic time. So, so consider this. If you work part-time, you must report all work. So let's say you applied, you have enough wages and work history and they approve you. And, uh, but then you start working several hours a week in the, in, in, um, in the store doing some delivery or whatever. So you have to report this work and they will reduce your amount. And there is a whole formula. If you work one, if you work in only one hour a day, they consider it the whole day work. So if you work one hour on Monday, so you, your full benefits will be decreased by three fourths. Two days of work, so half of your benefits will be cut. Three days of work a week, one fourth of the benefit uh, will be cut. And if you work four days a week, like one hour of four days, so you don't qualify that week for any benefit. So, I mean, it's a little complicated, but I think um, we'll share the slides as well. So you have it as a reference. And also there is a whole book online but it's like uh, 50 pages, but so I try to um, squeeze the best information so you can have the very most important information here. Um, so it's important that if you also make more than $500 a week, if you make $500 a week, you also do not qualify for that week to receive wages. Uh, to receive benefit from unemployment. But again, if you skip a week because you worked one week, they add this week at the end of your benefit. I mean, if you still unemployed or part-time employed for the next uh, 20 or something week that left, so they just add it uh, to the slide, uh, to the end of the um, your benefit period. 
again, I mean, you don't have to know all the small details of this, but this is as a reference. So if you work, you know uh, how much benefits can be cut for you. So I'll switch to this new pandemic unemployment assistance assistance program. This is something very um, so why I see this uh, thing. Emma, if you can erase all this. I'll, I'll try to see if I can erase it from my side, Tanselia. I don't know who did it. Um, it's not me. <laughs> uh, so Pandemic unemployment assistance is a totally new system just being set up under labor department, but it's not like a regular unemployment system. This is for all workers who traditionally not qualified for regular unemployment for which, which I just described. This is for people who usually don't qualify because you, you were self-employed, you had your own business, you were an independent contractor, you worked for cash, or you have not, not enough work history to apply for regular unemployment. So you can apply now for pandemic unemployment. This is a temporary program that pays around the same money as regular unemployment. So you get at least $600 a week as a pandemic assistance plus uh, 172 or 500 a week, depends on how much money you made before. Um, and they can cut it in half uh, if you cannot prove your wages before. This program is also for those who were about to start working because, for example, if you just received your work permit and was looking for a job and then this thing happened, the pandemic happened and now you cannot start any job. So you still can apply for this pandemic unemployment assistance because you are ready and willing and searching for work. Um, so this is for you. Anzalia, it looks like I can't remove the marks, but unsharing your screen and then starting to share again might refresh it. Okay. Maybe Maria, who has access to this and made this scratches on <laughs> uh, by mistake. Yeah, I'm not sure where they came from. Um, so you want me to restart? Yeah, I think if you stop sharing your screen and then begin sharing your screen again, it'll reset the annotations. Okay, let me start again. Sorry. Okay, Perfect. worked. Yeah. <laughs> what I just said, this is summarized in this table from labor department. So basically it's saying that, let me see. So if you, if you already approved for unemployment, you don't have to do anything. You, you approved, you receive your additional money and uh, everything set up. If you traditionally not eligible for unemployment, you still have to apply for through regular system, get rejected, and they, they will automatically move you to pandemic unemployment assistance. Um, this is confusing because uh, many people think, okay, I worked for cash and I don't have any proof uh, of my salary or my wages, so what I do. So you still go to the regular system and I will show you the application, very simple. You go to regular system, register, apply and wait. They will send you a letter saying that you are rejected and you are moved to pandemic unemployment assistance. So it's a process. First, you have to get rejected from the regular unemployment to qualify for pandemic. But application includes both um, parts. When you apply, you apply as a regular worker who lost the job. And then there is a second part that uh, say, yes, I am also interested in pandemic uh, unemployment assistance. So this is completely new system. I will tell you, Labor Department still trying to figure out how to do this and uh, how many people to help, so be patient. Um, it's uh, totally new. It's the Congress, United States Congress just passed this legislation on 27 of March, so several weeks ago, and still being um, processed. 
again, this is a summary table from the Labor Department website and it's saying who qualify for pandemic unemployment assistance. So this is for workers who are not working, who cannot work right now because you are diagnosed with COVID-19 or you have symptoms and seeking testing or someone in your family is diagnosed or you're providing care for someone in your family who diagnosed or you a primary caregiver for your children, the children who cannot go to school right now and you have to take care of children and cannot really go to work. So this is also for you. Also, if you cannot reach the place of employment because of uh, quarantine or because the doctor told you to self quarantine. So uh, this is also a qualifying event. There are other things like you, so, it's interesting, usually for regular unemployment, you cannot quit your job. But here it says you quit your job because of the result of the pandemic. So you still may qualify for the specific uh, pandemic unemployment um, temporary assistance. So your place of unemployment closed, you were self-employed, you were independent contractor, you were a farmer, or you were seeking part-time employment before pandemic, or you have no work history, and now you cannot work or you otherwise not qualified for regular unemployment. So, but people who are working online right now and getting paid, I mean, they don't qualify because you considered uh, working full time. And also if you receive any other benefits like uh, sick leave or other paid leave or medical leave assistance, so you also don't qualify. But see that the all the types of situations and scenarios or, uh, will qualify you under this pandemic assistance. So this is very important to know that you still can qualify. The only thing that you need is a social security number to access that. I'm sorry to say that people without social security or without work permit cannot access this right now. So my the purpose of the presentation basically tell you if you have social security, even if you never worked or worked for cash, still apply for unemployment insurance. So please apply. Even if you feel you don't qualify, still apply because you can qualify for the pandemic unemployment assistance. I'm focusing here on New York, New York State, but it applies to any state because this is a federal program, like pandemic unemployment assistance available to anyone with social security numbers, basically. As I said, the, the system, the labor department is very overwhelmed. They like just hired a thousand of workers to process this. <clears throat> the unemployment system never saw so many unemployed workers in all its history. Like how many, 22 million, Americans applied and uh, every day there are millions of people apply. So there is a waiting time. It takes several weeks and this is very frustrating because you, you, we need cash and many people need cash right now. Um, but I mean, you still have to register and wait. <laughs> register and they will qualify you eventually, if not for regular unemployment, then to pandemic unemployment. A big question here, um, and it's a legal question, does receiving this assistance put me at the risk on the public charge? Many people who are seeking asylum very much afraid to receive any government help because they think it may disqualify them. So first of all, as I mentioned, unemployment assistance is not public assistance and doesn't fall under public charge rule at all. It will not prevent you to, from applying to green card in the future or citizenship because this is not public assistance. This is a, a taxpayer paid money, you earn this. The second question about for asylum seekers, for pending asylum cases, the issue, the issue of public charge doesn't even apply as I understand. And the financial need or benefit receipt is not considered during your asylum interview. This is not a grounds for rejecting your asylum um, and uh, receiving any money for which you are eligible for from the city or the state is okay. I don't know if Caitlin will uh, correct me at the end, but the, 
Um, idea is you should not be afraid, even your case is pending, please apply. Because now we live in extraordinary times and it's a natural disaster. And I don't think uh, this should uh, stop anyone to, from applying. Tanzalia, do you mind if I jump in before you move to the next slide? Yeah. There was a good suggestion um, that we give people who are on the phone and don't have the chat function a chance to just ask any questions specifically about the difference between unemployment insurance and pandemic unemployment insurance. Does mm -hmm. everybody um, feel clear on that distinction? Are there any questions? Yes. Um... You, you think that um, we'll take some questions right now, right in the middle, right? So yeah. people don't, don't forget. Maria, you have to unmute yourself if you want to speak. And so, yeah, I think we should just give a chance for people to ask their questions because those who don't yeah. talk the phone is very hard to follow. I mean, you know, because they don't have the screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe Caitlin want to say something about what you just say about the public charge because I know it's a very big concern. Sure. Um, so, so no, she's absolutely right. There's, there's no concern that asylum seekers should be having about applying for unemployment benefits. Um, it will in no way affect your asylum case, whether your asylum case has yet to be filed if it's currently pending, or if you've already filed it and even had the interview and now you're waiting to speak with a judge about your case, at no point will have having applied for and or received unemployment benefits affect your asylum case. There, there's no concern to be had there. Thank you. Great. Um, okay. Seems like nobody has any questions at the moment. So uh, Tanzalia, if you want to take back over. Um, thanks to everybody who's putting questions in the chat. I'm making note of them and we'll address those at the end of the presentation. Okay, so how to apply. So I'll briefly go through the steps of applying. It's pretty easy. Before you apply, you need to have your contact information, your phone number and address because they're going to call you and they're going to send letters to your address. So you need the accurate contact information, then you need social security number. Unfortunately, without social security number, you cannot even register in the system. Uh, and they cannot uh, process your claim if you don't have social security. That's why this webinar is mostly for those who have work authorization or social security number, even if you never worked uh, in this country. If you have a driver license information, this is helpful. If you put driver New York State driver license in the system, they will pull some information from existing records and it will help your claim. Um, they can pull some um, to verify your identity faster because otherwise it will take some more weeks to verify your identity. If you worked for salary and wages and you have W-2 form from your previous employers, uh, from the last 18 months, doesn't matter if uh, you don't have from the last several months, you have to provide W-2 forms from the last one and a half years, if you have, if you have, if you don't have, then don't worry about that. And also for, if you qualify, they will send you money to direct deposit, it's faster. So you have to provide a bank account and routing number to your bank account. If you don't have bank account, they will send you a benefit card uh, that says um, Labor Department uh, uh, benefits on it. So it's a, it's a separate benefit card. Some people may have benefit card from Medicaid or cash assistance or other. This is different card. They will send you a debit card separately to your home address. So, I mean, this, you have to prepare all these numbers, uh, this uh, documentation before you go into the system. So first you have to create your New York State ID login. Um, if you ever applied for driver license in the state, you already have it and you have to remember and you can restore your password. If you never applied for any New York State, not the city, it's a state of uh, benefits. Usually, I don't know, I had, because I had driver license for me, it was easy um, because I registered before. 
but registration is very easy. So you go to this website, sorry, those who don't see my slides, but there is a like long address at ny.gov. You go and create your ID. You, you need your full name and your email address, that's all. So you put your email and your name and click create account. Then you go to your inbox, click confirm your email, and then it will lead you to, to another screen, say, please select three secret questions. This is for identity, to, to make sure next time that it's you logging in. And then at the end, it will ask you, please choose a password to access a New York uh, website, New York State website. I mean, this is the three screens you have to fill out. You have to confirm through your email inbox. I mean, if you have any questions, we can chat about this, but this is uh, pretty straightforward. Those who ever registered for anything online, this is very similar system. Then the next question, then you have to go to this website, unemployment.laborny.gov. This is the main website and this website went live on April 7. So this is a new website. This is for new claims. Because the labor department was so overwhelmed, they created the whole new website and new whole, new whole new application system now, um, starting April 7. If you applied before April 7, you probably saw a different screen, different website and different application. I'm sorry. So that's a kind of a, a confusion that now the whole new system is live and everybody applies through the new system. Um, I hear something. Okay. Um, if you do not speak English well, you can apply through the phone, but the problem, the phones are so busy, uh, it takes several days and several attempts to reach a uh, labor department on the phone. But if you press the number for translator, it's a little faster. So less people applying who do not speak English. So if you don't have access to computer at all, or don't understand English very well, it's better to apply through the phone number. And here I put the main phone number, 1882098124, where you can call and select an interpreter and your language, and someone in your language will create your application uh, on the phone. This is very important, and I think um, online is much easier and faster, but if, if you have to, you have to call and select your language and they speak like 200 something languages, any language you can request to help you. Also, you can apply on certain days only depend on the last name. So they say on Monday, if your last name starts from A to F, you have to apply on Monday. If your last name starts G to, from G to N, you apply to on Tuesday and Wednesday from O to Z, but anyone can apply on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they have certain hours when the phone system and online system are open. It's from 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 in the evening, usually. On the weekends, it's a little longer. Um, so here, um, just a reminder for you when you can apply. But again, it's for new application. If you have applied or tried to apply before, don't, don't apply again because it will not let you to go through the system again. So what about this new pandemic application? This is a tricky part. If you applied before April 7, if you already tried to access the system, and you filled out partially or fully application for regular unemployment, now you have to separately go and apply for pandemic unemployment assistance. Um, and this is a separate application. You go with your ny.gov ID, log in again, find my online forms, go to online forms and find this pandemic unemployment application. It's in a different place than regular unemployment. So that's um, a little confusing here. 
but this is for people who already applied before April, okay? Um, if you're applying right now, you don't have to, to separately fill another application. But <laughs> if you apply now after April 7 up to today, you still have to certify this pandemic. Every week you have to go through the same steps, go online forms, go to find your pandemic unemployment application, which is already filled for you and, and click on it and fill the, for every week you're not working, feel that I'm not working, I'm searching for work, I'm available for work, it's this weekly certification. And this is required both for regular unemployment and for pandemic. If your regular unemployment is not accessible because you don't qualify, you just go and do this every week for pandemic unemployment. I just learned this two days ago, so it's uh, every day some new rules. So that's why this, uh, some of this information may be outdated in a couple of weeks, but I'm just telling you, if you're doing this now, you have to do this uh, to certify weekly pandemic application. Yes, I'm sorry, like I'm confusing people, but um, uh, there is a lot of all of these different um, things and steps to take. And especially if you do not speak English well, it's not easy to navigate this all online forms going here and there in all different places on the website. Well, so I will go briefly through the steps, how to, you, who, how to apply. Those who applied already, I'm sorry, I'm repeating some of the stuff, but they, if you never applied, now it's the time to apply. Please apply. If you have social security, you definitely have to apply, <laughs> even if you never worked again. Here they ask you, so once you create your ny.gov ID, you go to labor department and log, with, log in into labor department website. Um, the one that I showed, unemployment.labor.ny.gov that's the website you go and they ask to log in. So you log in and this is the first page you will see. They ask, please have your ID identification, please have your employer's W-2 forms, your alien registration number, your A number, uh, telephone number, mailing address, and paper and pen just in case to uh, jot down some stuff. Then the next screen will take you to the uh, contract kind of that uh, you promise that you will not um, file any fraudulent um, information and then um, that they will ask you for direct deposit option that you need your bank account to provide um, that you will need maybe to call or they will call you. So there's all these different instructions. You have to click I agree here to and go to the next page to the actual application. So the application starts with step one asking how many days you work this week. So you put zero if you're not working. If you worked, you put one or two days if you work part time. Then this week, did you earn more than $504? Yes or no? And then the most important question is number three, what was the last day you worked? This is the actual day you stopped working or the actual day when your hours were cut. Um, because they're going to calculate your benefit based from this date. Even if it was early March, put early March um, because this, they're going to pay you back for those weeks for March. So this date is very important here. And uh, Another question was your employment status impacted by COVID-19? Usually yes, because why I lost my job because I, well, my business closed or something happened um, because of pandemic. So you put yes. So the next step, they ask you mailing address. Please be very accurate because they're going to send you a paper uh, letter to your address. Next step is your name any other name you used for employment, your date of birth, your social security number, your driver license, you have it or not, then driver license you put no if you don't have, how many, how many employers you worked in the past 18 months, you put one, two or three, uh, depends. If you, if you are self-employed, you should put one because you work only for yourself or by yourself. 
so your mailing address again, and if you are not a citizen here at the end, they ask, are you a citizen? No, then please provide your A number. So here's a place to put, sorry, uh, you put your A number. There are special instructions here for those who work for yourself. I mean, it means you work for cash or you own your business or you're just uh, self-employed. Uh, in any other way. So there are special instructions for this. I will not go in detail, but when they ask you for your last employer, you put self-employed, not, not uh, yourself, but you put self-employed. And then when they ask for employer tax ID, you, you just leave blank and blank, blank. Don't uh, put any other information, just put self-employed once. And, uh, it will ask you how much money you make so you can put some average. If you never file taxes, um, they will verify it with you. So it's, uh, they may ask you to provide your account information to show how much money you made or the check or whatever uh, cash you received. So this is a little complicated, but again, you have to do that because you are proving that you worked someplace somehow. Then the next step is to fill this pandemic application, the second part of your regular application. So it explains what is pandemic for. This says if we not approve your regular employment, you will move to pandemic if you, work, you were self-employed or were seeking work or seeking part-time work or you're taking care of your children and cannot work right now and all this other stuff that you are self-quarantining or someone sick in your family so you can qualify. So there's all this eligibility criteria. You just click next. And here's the step five in the unemployment, um, pandemic unemployment application. And here's the tricky question that's asking you, do you have the ability to, to telecommute with pay? It means, are you working online right now and receiving salary right now? So you say no. It, it's not asking you if you're able in the future. The question is, is formulated very strange to me, like I am not an English speaker. For me, it's very confusing. So do you have the ability to, to telecommute with pay? I say no, because not right now I'm not working online. Are you receiving paid sick leave or other benefits? So uh, you say yes or no, or well, usually no. And then I certify that uh, I want to um, um, apply for pandemic unemployment insurance and go to the next and that's all. So they, you receive a confirmation into, uh, in your mailbox. They will also send you a paper to your address and they will also call you in the next three days. They will call you to verify your identity and ask some additional information. So they do all these things. So you have to have your phone <laughs> working. You have to have access to your email and you have to have a, a correct mailing address. So you receive the paper from labor department that the uh, give you instructions what to do next. So the, I think the application is pretty uh, straightforward. It's much easier than it was before April 7, just to tell you. Those who applied before, it was a little longer application. Once you apply, your application may be saying the status pending and you cannot do anything for weeks. Um, now they started calling people back. I mean, they say, please don't call our number. The numbers are overwhelmed. They cannot respond to you by number, wait for our call. So they usually call during the week. They say 72 hours, but actually you have to wait a week to complete your application online. You will, again, you will also receive a paper letter in your mail. So in the last, I have to give you some tips and advice. Um, again, so wait for the call. Doesn't matter you apply online or by phone, they will call you during the week to verify all information. But the problem now, a lot of scammers calling, trying to get your social security and your mailing inf mail information on the phone as well. They will call and say, I'm calling from labor department. Can you verify your social security number? your name and your date of birth. Don't give this information, never give such information on the phone. 
when the labor department calls you, they say, I'm calling you, please verify, and they will read your information to you. They will not ask you to give them information. That's what they're trying to say to protect people. They will read back whatever social security, whatever information you gave, they will read you on the phone, say, is it correct? Is it correct? Is it correct? You say, yes, 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 but don't volunteer uh, any information to them. This is very important because now the scammers, um, the fraudulent phone calls are very, very common. The people using um, this um, disaster to, to scam other people. So once you're approved, you have to go to online and certify your claim every week. Again, go to the link, say certify your claim, and then say, yes, this week I still was not working. This week I was looking for work. I was able to work. I was willing to work. I was not uh, sick and I was not working any day. So you have to certify in order to receive your benefit every week. You have to certify every week. If you miss a week, you don't get payment for that week. That's the problem. The same with pandemic unemployment. The pandemic unemployment insurance payments are not going out yet. As for this week, I checked, nobody received anything from pandemic unemployment assistance because this, the staff is being trained, the system is being put in place, but you still have to certify. That's the tricky part. Every week you have to certify, go back to your online application and certify your pandemic unemployment that you were not working, still wait, not working, still searching for work, still uh, in this situation. So, so you have a record for how many weeks you certified. Once they start paying, then they will have all this record for you. All this process takes several weeks, unfortunately, because um, again, they don't have enough stuff. The phone numbers are overwhelmed, the website, um, millions and millions of people applying across the, the United States and uh, over the million in New York City and the state, a lot of people applying and they just, the system doesn't catch up, but it will um, be easier in the next several weeks. But again, online is very easy to apply and then just have to wait for the paper letter, for the call from labor department. Uh, I also recommend very much if you use social media to follow New York State Labor on the Facebook and on Twitter because this um, agency posts a lot of updates every week on the social media, not on the website so much. But you can read on Twitter, I'm looking at New York State Department of Labor Twitter every day and they post new rules and new updates and saying, don't worry, we're going to call you, don't worry, doing this. So um, follow this uh, agency online. Another tricky part, they will ask you to send some documents uh, by fax or by uh, through your online messages inbox. So you can take a photo by your phone with your phone the photograph of your w2 forms of your id card whatever documents they ask and send it through the ny.gov online forms inbox there is a message part or if they what they do sometimes they ask to fax those documents you can also take a picture of your documents and install on your phone, on your computer. There's electronic fax applications for free. You can fax electronic documents. I mean, but this is a technical part. And if you have any questions, you can always come back to us, to Reef, and we'll help you with this by, if they ask you for additional documents to send. And the very last part uh, I want to highlight the New York State is very um, language uh, aware, so they provide a lot of language support. Online, if you go to the laborny.gov, they have a lot of um, information in different languages in, uh, in Chinese, Haitian, Creole, Korean, Russian, Spanish, and others. Um, so you can download this, frequently ask questions about coronavirus emergency. And it's very important. This is about unemployment in different languages right now, and also about pandemic unemployment assistance. Again, don't forget that you can file on certain days only. Um, and when, again, this no, main number, you can always call 
click on, on need interpreter and wait and they find you an interpreter. But this is a little frustrating. You have to call several days in a row to access the phone system. But again, this is um, going to be easy in the next several days because now they uh, hired a lot of people, they added a lot of phone lines. I mean, they told me that um, they're training a lot of people to do this. I mean, they hired more than 1,000 people now to do this and to help you. And interpretation is always available. Okay, I'm done here. <laughs> uh, Tanzalia, how about first, let me digest the questions that came up in the chat, and then we'll mm -hmm. open it up to the group to speak. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Tanzalia, for doing this very comprehensive um, and complex, you know, presentation. I know that it's probably very difficult for those on the phone to, you know, because I, I guess you could not see the screen, but I hope you were able to follow and now really don't hesitate to ask your question. Um, and also we know that some of you who are either on the phone or video may not have necessarily a work permit or social security. So we'll also briefly address this issue after we're going through the questions. So please be patient and thank you. Great, okay, I'm gonna start with, Chris had two questions. The first question was, um, would an Uber driver be considered self-employed under the unemployment insurance application? Yes, though in some states, I think in New York State, you still considered uh, self-employed but you still have to apply if you are not working right now because it just there is no clients anymore or you work only like one hour a week you have to apply and the, if you don't qualify for regular unemployment they will register you for pandemic unemployment i think all drivers whom i know working in any car service they are still can apply should apply because there is just no driving jobs anymore or not many i mean some people work on delivery but it's very um, few few hours a week um i don't know because sometimes uber is required to register you as a regular employee in some states but if you are given a 1099 form it means you are independent contractor uh, so independent contractors still can ac access the system and most probably you will get pandemic unemployment assistance. And so it seems like the takeaway is don't worry too much about which one you're going to qualify for. Just apply and the state will determine which one you qualify for. Yes, yes. Doesn't matter. Again, the most important here is to have your social security number how you worked, where you worked, how much you made, and what kind of employment you had doesn't matter. Even if you never worked or was about to start working, you still have to apply because you are a potential worker. That's the message that from all our <laughs> event today. If you have social security, you definitely have to apply. Doesn't matter where you worked or never worked. Great, this leads into Chris's second question, which is if someone was working off the books and they weren't declaring that income, is it risky for them to try to file for uh, pandemic unemployment assistance? It's, it's risky in what way? I mean, um, it's not risky <laughs> because either you can say you, you didn't work anyway, was about to start working or declare your uh, income. If you put this money into account and you can show that you actually made some money, it just give you opportunity to receive a higher benefit based on your cash earnings. The New York State system is, for example, New York State system is not connected to, to, to immigration system in any way. That's a good thing because when I worked in the labor department, we served a lot of undocumented workers. Most of them never filed taxes or never declared, but we still, encourage them to access, access the system and, and declare their earnings and to show the bank accounts here showing how much they made the, in cash. Um, because New York State doesn't discriminate based on your status and the 
uh, people understand that uh, some people have to work like this. Um, but you don't have to declare this amount. You just apply saying that you never officially worked anywhere. And you still may qualify for the minimum benefit plus 600 a week. Great, thanks Tanzalia. Chris, why don't you jump yeah. on and clarify what you mean and then yeah. let's so invite Lynn to thanks. weigh in as well from a legal perspective. Okay, thanks. So first of all, the presentation is very good and thank you very much for it. The, the, the more precise question I was asking is, uh, for example, I worked off the books, uh, I made income, and I should have filed a tax return, but I never did. And now I'm filing for unemployment insurance. Is there a risk that somebody then says, oh, wait a minute, why is it that you never filed the tax return that you should have filed? That, that was the question I was asking. The Labor Department doesn't punish specifically for this situation because uh, when you look at the manual that they have this uh, claimant, claimant uh, handbook online and there is a specific instructions how to declare your cash um, income even if you never officially paid taxes on it or never declared this but you still can claim based on these earnings. Uh, new, so labor departments say any work, any earnings are calculated and they take in consideration. And because they are not a tax authority and they're not immigration authority, they don't care about this actually. So, I mean, there are no implication, nothing negative comes if you declare this for the purposes of unemployment. The only thing they will ask, prove how much you made. So, and prove they usually ask some, checking account or some check checks uh, copies to show that you actually made some money and they will not punish you for not uh, paying taxes or not declaring this before because this is not a tax authority they are not related to the irs or any federal agency they will not report you to anywhere to anyone thanks tanzalia caitlin is there anything you'd like to say on this topic um I agree with everything that's been said. The one thing I would add um, just to think about is that if you receive unemployment benefits, um, the following tax year, that is something that you do have to include when you file your taxes because you actually do have to pay taxes on unemployment benefits that you receive. And you will be given a form by the state of New York that tells you this is the amount of unemployment benefits you received for this tax year, which you then have to declare and you file your taxes the subsequent year. So one thing to keep in mind is that knowing that you will have to declare your unemployment benefits on your taxes next year, you wanna be sure that you're also showing that you declared income for the year previously. Does that make sense? So you wanna make sure that you're not using income in order to um, be eligible for unemployment benefits. If you were not filing your taxes, saying that you didn't have any income, because that is something that um, for purposes of immigration, there's a lot of, um, not for asylum specifically, but after you've been granted asylum and you're applying for, um, you know, for other benefits or to adjust status and eventually naturalize, your tax documents do come up. And that's just one thing to kind of keep in mind is that um, you wanna make sure that you're consistent with um, whether you're saying that you did work and did earn income in a certain year or whether you said there was no earned income because that could potentially become an issue down the road. Does anybody have any questions for Caitlin on that topic? I just want to make sure everyone understands that. Caitlin, we will ask you to maybe write something in writing, you know, after that and we'll, we'll send it to, to people. Okay. Um, great. We have one last question from the chat, and then I'll open it up to the group to speak. Natalia asked, Tansalia, can you tell us what, what do you mean when you say net annual net income? And where can somebody find out what their uh, annual net income was? The best way is to look at your tax return. For many people who lived here more than one year, I hope you file some kind of tax returns and then it uh, show you on the first page, your uh, adjusted gross income is uh, on usually line 30 or something on the first uh, page of your tax return. Um, 
your gross income is the income you receive before before taxes were taken, right? Uh, and the net income is after taxes, how much at the end of you get on um, um, in your pocket. Uh, you can calculate it yourself. Also, Labor Department looking at the last 18 months, I mean, one and a half year of uh, income. And the tax return usually give you an annual income. So it's it's something that you have to calculate. You also, if you receive W-2 or 1099 or any form from your employer, it also will show how much you made and how much taxes they took from you. Um, I mean, it's in all these papers. If you don't have these papers, you just have to go to your bank account and, and calculate manually from all the checks and money that comes to your uh, checking account. Just make a note how much you made in the last 18 months by quarter, every three months, how much you made um, in cash if you don't have paper from your employer. Great, we have one more question that came through the chat. Um, if someone has submitted and they were told they were going to get called and they aren't called within that 72 hour window, um, say it's been five or six days, what is your suggestion for this person? Well, if you look at the Labor Department Twitter, it says, wait, wait, wait. Um, so, um, yes, you can try to call uh, yourself. Uh, as I say, the language line is a little bit easier to access than the English language line. Um, if you ask for interpreter, usually you have to wait on, like for, for 40 minutes or so and they will, uh, some interpreter will be online on, on the phone for you. But the, the thing is, again, the lines were very overwhelmed in the last three weeks. Now they say like, Google, Verizon, and other technical companies now help labor department, like they donated and they come with different solutions. Now they're expanding the, the multi-line uh, more and more every day. I mean, the situation is very fluid and it's changing every day at labor department. And if you couldn't uh, reach them last week, this week may be easier. Next week will be even more easier. So it's... Uh, it's a matter of luck. Uh, again, it's a lot of frustration to many people. And uh, I feel like people whose English is not uh, um, first language, it's harder for us because uh, it's very difficult to navigate the whole system. But uh, because Americans who speak English, they, fr uh, so I, I look at the uh, forums, how much frustration is there just for, for English speakers, but imagine for, uh, for us, uh, it's, uh, it's even harder. That's why you have to try, you have to wait, follow the New York uh, Labor Department on the Twitter and see what is the latest instructions and they address it. They say, if we didn't call you in the 72 hours, please wait another two days. I mean, they, they give you some updates all the time on Facebook or on Twitter. Great, thank you, Tanzalia. That's all the questions in the chat. So now we can open it up to the group if anybody wants to speak up to ask a question. Okay, yes, I have a question. Um, I fill out my application. Uh, it was two weeks ago. Uh, I think that the system was different when I fill out because instead that they call me, I have to call. And it was really, you know, frustrated because they never answer my call. But I'm a little confused because uh, when Tanilsa was explaining how to fill the unemployment insurance, the five step is the pandemic. Uh, benefit when i fill out my application i didn't have the option so my question is i have to still wait for the answer if my unemployment insurance request is approved or not to apply for pandemic or i can apply right now for pandemic employment assistance if your application is still pending or not completed because they didn't call you, first of all, they promise now to call you. So you have to, to, to receive a call soon, but you don't have to wait for that. You have to go and fill a second application called pandemic uh, unemployment assistance. 
I don't know if you see the screen or not. This is, I opened the slide. Yes, yes. Where to go. So you, you have to find this pandemic unemployment assistance is in a different place than your un yes. regular unemployment. It's in different place. You go and fill it out separately. Yes, but I have to wait for the... No, you don't have to wait. You don't I, have I can, to wait. I, I, can, I can fill this application right now if I want. For example. Yes, yes. It's better you fill it out because in case they reject you next week, you already have this ready. And not only to fill it, but also go every Sunday and certify, fill it again. I mean, you have to fill this pandemic once a week. Okay. And I have another question is because I'm, I'm nervous now about the call because I received a call the last week of a typical number from Newark, I remember. And they was like, oh, I'm from the labor of New York. And I don't remember if I gave my information. I don't remember. But then, then I received another call from an, you know, an unknown number. And they said again that they are from the labor of New York. So how I can be sure that it is, it is the right person that is coming from the Department of Labor? Because uh, one of them told me that I have to receive a letter. I've been waiting for this letter. Um, in my email and my mail, mailbox, I don't have any answer. So, First of all, they, they have your information because you maybe don't remember, but you put your phone, they require a phone in your up, original application. But because the labor department workers work from home, so they use the private numbers to call. And uh, how you know? Because when they call, they will tell you, you applied on this date, you applied for unemployment insurance on April 1st, for example, and this is your address. So they will give you information you, and they ask you, are you this person? Did you apply on this date? Is it your mailing address? So they have this information. They have to read it back to you to, to verify. And then you know this is the people because they, they know when you applied for unemployment, they know your address. They usually don't ask for social security on the phone. Um, and they, if they have it, they will read your social security back to you, but don't give social security number on the phone and don't give your birth date yourself. They should tell you. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be afraid to answer those calls because again, the calls come from private numbers because people working from home, uh, but, um, they have to have your information because they have access to your uh, form online and they will read back to you and they will also explain the next steps but don't wait please again go to fill out your pandemic unemployment as well uh, okay great thank you so much before we shift to talk about um what you should do if you don't have a social security number. Are there any last questions about unemployment benefits? Great, okay, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, what are the alternatives for someone who doesn't have a social security number? Um, before people weigh in on this, I just wanna say that we have an infographic on the homepage of Reef's website that walks through some of those options, but we can talk about them a bit here as well. Um, Tanzalia or Maria, do you want to weigh in? Yeah, yes, I can talk about some of this. I can talk about this uh, Soros fund I read yesterday. Sure. Um, well, how about I'll, I'll do kind of a big picture of you know the steps that at reef we've identified and then uh tansley if you want to jump in with news about the soros fund mm -hmm. um so if you go to our website and scroll down you'll see kind of a series of questions that a lot of people are asking um and one of those is what are my choices if i don't have a work permit as tansley's presentation has has demonstrated if you don't have a work permit you don't qualify for most government benefits there are some exceptions to this. Um, if you're a woman who's pregnant or you're the parent of a child who was born in the US, 
you can qualify for certain government benefits, um, either yourself or by applying through your child's so social security. Um, if, if you're in that type of situation and you want more information, just shoot us an email and we can tell you the names of those specific programs. Um, free food is available every day, three meals at all New York City public school locations. Um, and then a lot of food banks and pantries are still operating um, and trying to kind of, you know, for people who are struggling to access cash assistance, they're trying to at least make sure food is available. We have a full list of kind of those on our uh, website as well in our COVID-19 resource guide, which I'll send out after this email. Um, something to be aware of is that the options at some of these places are limited. You know, there'll be, you know, some are more kind of canned food, some are fresh food. Um, so just as you do research into what's available, um, keep in mind that if you have any kind of restrictions on what you're able to eat, um, that's something to keep in mind. And then lastly, there are a lot of private relief funds that are starting, and this is kind of what Tanzalia can touch on. Um, the types of organizations that are doing cash assistance um, are religious organizations like churches and synagogues, nonprofit organizations, language schools. Um, there's a lot, a lot of them are being organized on social media. Um, because these funds are limited, and of course, so many people who don't have social security numbers and can't access government benefits are applying, there's no guarantee by applying that you'll get one. Um, and we definitely recognize that that it's really difficult to kind of keep applying for things and not hear back and it can be very discouraging. Um, and so we, we really encourage you not to get discouraged and to try to stay, um, kind of stay persistent and keep trying to access these funds um, if you're in a position where you don't have a social uh, security number. So Tanzalia, do you wanna talk a bit about the Soros Fund and Maria, I don't know if there's anything else you kind of wanna say about those options. Yeah, I mean, I just want to say, first of all, really, we are, you know, I mean, we really I know, realize how difficult it is for those who don't have a work permit, who were waiting for a work permit. And therefore, because of that, you cannot have access to a social security number that you are, that it is really, you know, very difficult situation because at least, you know, for the other um, person, they will have some down the line, they will receive some, some money. So one um, thing that I feel a bit more optimistic, you know, looking every day on the news or through our contacts is that bigger organization um, are going to, are starting to organize themselves to start to do these private relief funds. That means that they're not going to ask about your social security number, but it's taking a little bit of time, but hopefully there will be more and more of them and we will make sure to uh, announce those um, whenever they are available on our website. So please check with us. Again, we want to apologize because we try, we also have a very small fund and we are trying to help. I mean, we've tr we had really a lot of requests so we were not able to respond favorably to everyone. Um, but it's just to give you an example is that just to keep, you know, um, in a way, you know, don't, don't get discouraged. That is the biggest message. Um, and finally, you know, that also you should be aware that if you have to choose between paying for your food or other bills and rent, don't forget that right now you don't have the obligation to pay rent. Okay, and Tanzalia, do you want to say something about the Soros Fund, which is, I think, going to give a lot of money to the city? Yes, city, and uh, that's why I want to kind of encourage people to apply. Um, let me open it um, to apply for the city programs. Let me show you. So there is Access NYC. Again, usually they also ask for a social security number. 
Um, Access NYC, if you Google it, you can find this page. I'm showing it on the screen. Those who don't see just Access NYC, you can find it very easily and fill out the application here as well. This is not the state, this is the city programs. Um, why you have to fill it out? Because just yesterday they announced a new fund for undocumented workers. And what I understand that asylum seekers without work authorization may qualify um, for, for this new fund that uh, sponsored by Soros, but the money is going to the city, to that system, to Access NYC, I think they're going to distribute. This is just announced yesterday, so that's why um, it's very new. Hopefully they will roll it out very quickly and very fast. Uh, and here, please follow this NYC and follow the Blasio, uh, also <laughs> Twitter and Facebook. This is how I get my information from the city. I follow the city, I follow the, our mayor, the Blasio on Twitter, and I read all this news there. Um, what they announced that people who do not have work authorization, people who have no documents, they can qualify, they can, get like 400 for per person, 800 for couple, and a thousand for families with children. They, they announced it yesterday. How they're going to distribute it, I'm not sure. But I think they're going to distribute this through this Access NYC system because they mentioned that they're going also to consult you where to get relief and like rent, unemployment, cash assistance, emergency food, and other case by case basis. So what I recommend is to register for this Access NYC, create your account, create your uh, case online with the city. So once they start rolling this undocumented fund uh, to the uh, families, it, it will go through the city, city system. So please register with the city. And the first step is to register an Access NYC website that I'm showing here. So that's uh, my encouragement as well that the money is coming to help those without social security and without uh, work authorization as well. But this is all new. And again, Reef also will going to inform you any news, but you can follow the news from the city, follow the Blasio and follow all um, NYC and Access NYC has a Twitter as well. So they announced a lot of things there. Um, what else? Is yeah, there any questions that you have about about the issue of not having a social security and 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 not being able to access all these benefits? Okay. If not at the moment, there's one question from Max that I just want to address, and that's about the possibility of a rent strike. Um, I want to just clarify based on our conversations with um, a housing attorney, the eviction moratorium means that your landlord cannot begin an eviction proceeding against you. This is if you have a formal lease, but even if you don't have like a formal contract, but you know, maybe you have text messages with your landlord that, that explain your arrangement, you are protected in housing court and your landlord cannot legally evict you until they go to housing court and ask to evict you. That's a process that takes several months and landlords aren't allowed to start doing it until June when the eviction moratorium finishes. But it's critical to keep in mind um, that even though you can't be evicted, you still owe rent this month. And that if you don't pay rent now, there's no consequence for not paying it now, but if you don't pay it now, you will still owe it in the future. Um, there's a lot of, legislation right now. There are a lot of policies people are proposing um, to have kind of a rent forgiveness. Um, and that may come through, but for the, at the current moment, um, you, should, you should understand that um, any rent you don't pay now, you will still owe in the future. Um, that hasn't changed yet. But hopefully it will change. There are like big coalitions and other, a lot of people yeah. working on canceling the rent at least for three months so you don't have to owe this money. But a lot of people are working 
and I read a lot of reports from different city coalitions to press the legislators to cancel the rent for several months. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep you informed. If we hear anything, we'll let you know, but I just hope they will do this. Okay. Uh, Caitlin, do you have anything that you would like to add to this, uh, you know, discussion? Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Not, not, not as an attorney. Um, I guess as, you know, as a fellow New Yorker, I know, you know, how difficult this is for everybody. Um, and on a personal note, you know, I, I myself have filed for unemployment. I was supposed to start um, a new job and that's been, that's been put on hold. So I know the, the process is complicated and confusing and I waited many days to get that call from the labor department and, and they really are trying their very best to um, get things done as quickly and smoothly as possible for everybody who's, who's in a position where they, they are not currently working. Um, hang in there because it, they will get back to you. I, um, you know, I finally did get my call back. It, it took quite a long time, but they're really, they're really doing their very best and they appreciate, you know, the patience of everybody. And the good news is that even, I mean, for me, it took, you know, about two and a half weeks to actually finalize my claim. Um, New York does pay you your unemployment benefits, even if it took you a long time to finalize your claim, even if you filed it late, even if you weren't able to speak with a representative on the phone for several weeks, they're going to um, compensate you for the entire period that you're eligible to receive unemployment. So don't worry that if it's taking you forever to speak with somebody, that that's going to somehow um, minimize how much um, of, the, of the unemployment benefits you qualify for. It will not. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Well, again, thank you so much for everyone to have participated because I can imagine how it, it, it's not so easy to understand <laughs> all this uh, information. Even Tanzania did such a great job to make it accessible and um, somehow easy to understand. Thank you so much, Tanzania, for doing that. I just want to tell everybody again, uh, of course, we are here at Reef to answer to your question or to post any new updates. We're going to do our best on that. And finally, mm -hmm. we have this program where if you need like a volunteer that can help you to file and, you know, can help, you know, understanding those questions online, please feel free also to contact us. Thank you all. And thank you. That's great. Thanks. Hey, Lynn, we can see you too. <laughs> and my, the internet went out. Of, the, my internet actually went out for the first time ever <laughs> since I've been staying here in the middle, you know, after five minutes into the meeting. But anyway, but I got, I caught on. And I'm really trying to absorb, I think I understand quite a lot of it. And I just wanted to say that if, you know, if anyone wants to email me to see if I can, I can't help nearly as well as Emma or, Tanzania or Caitlin or you know but I certainly would try mm -hmm. if there are any issues not just probably not just to do with unemployment I'm here thank you Lynn. great job Tanzania and all and Emma too and Maria great job really helpful yeah totally well, everybody, have a good uh, rest of Friday. We just hope that there will be better news every day and that most likely, I mean, of course, as we know, as soon as we can all go back to work, we'll be very happy. But I, we still have to wait a, bit, a little bit. I think it's not for tomorrow, but hopefully we are slowly coming out of it. Hey, Masai. <laughs> Hi, hey, thank you, thank you guys for everybody because even I didn't apply, I have all social security, uh, I have my work permit, uh, even I tried two weeks ago that it's, it's uh, same me like uh, you couldn't apply because you don't have like previous tax history, you know, uh, but right now I think I got the website so I'm just going over through and I'll let you know exactly because if, if I can, you know, thank you. No, Absolutely. you have you have to apply because, he, right. as I said, even people without work history still uh, can qualify for this pandemic help. 
You, okay. you probably have it on your, lots of people have it on their bank accounts because they have to, I mean, quite a lot of people, even off the books, will mm -hmm. actually thread it through their account. I'm thinking but they, but if they send this also a cash card. If you don't have bank account, they will send you this debit card to you. Right, but I mean, to prove that you have been earning, I mean, even if you haven't declared, that you can do it with your showing your, your bank account, right? that you've been having regular money in or something? Yes, but for pandemic, you don't even have to work, oh, right, be right, working. Right. Like, they will call you and you say, I was about to start work and now I cannot search anymore because there's no um, jobs in my sector. So then it will automatically consider you for pandemic unemployment, which is, has much wider eligibility. Okay, got it. And I just had to unmute myself because I had to say, Masai, your background is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he left, he, he left to another planet. I was in a line somewhere, you know? I, I mean, I think he's, he's channeling how we're all feeling right now, which is that this is just like out of this world crazy. Yeah. Hey, Clint, do you know if we can apply a, to, for asylum in this planet? <laughs> you know, I'm hoping that the next planet we go to, we won't have to. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. and thank you, thank you, Kathleen. Good to see you now. Yeah, you yeah, too. Good to see you, Kathleen. Yeah, right, it's long time, you know. I don't know how, how I'm gonna contact you. You know, if you if you can like just takes me, right? <laughs> is your I mean, is your email working? Yeah, but it's yeah, working. But email. I didn't. Yeah, you didn't get any email, but I I just sent the email for. The other lawyer attorney. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't receive any answer. I told him you you left already New York, right? I'll get back to you. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back to baby duty, everybody. <laughs> okay. Okay. Say hi to the baby. <laughs> hey, 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 everybody that has been um... bye bye everyone. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>